A linked segmented rescale created using a time plot based on a two-dimensional random walk is not easy to make by hand. So I've made a web app to do it for you and a video to explain what all this gibberish means. But first, let's just do it because you don't need to know any of the theory or any of the concepts to just use the tool. So here we are on the homepage of Chamberlain Music. We've got these two apps, Realizer and Flipper. We will very briefly cover Flipper, but this video is all about Realizer and Realizer is really easy to use. Just select an audio file and hit submit. That's it. You'll want to fiddle around with these settings, of course, and we'll get into what those things do and what those things mean later in the video. But about halfway through processing, you get this image which shows you what the time plot looks like. And then when it finishes up, the download button turns cyan or you can just press play. And that's it. It's really that easy. Now, Flipper is the much improved version of the original Scale Flipper program I made back in 2017. This is much better in many ways, the primary thing being that you don't have to download it. It's just a web app. But if you want to do some quick, you know, negative harmony, flip your G7 around your C and G, get your D half diminished, it's nice for that. So that's Flipper. Just worth mentioning because it's here as well. So, two-dimensional random walk, time plot linked segmented rescale what does it all mean let's take it one at a time a rescale of some piece of audio is pretty straightforward it's just speeding it up or slowing it down maybe reversing it as well a segmented rescale is when you split the audio up into segments first and then you rescale each of these segments and a linked segmented rescale is specifically a segmented rescale where the segments stay connected in the same way that they were originally so the first segment ends and the second segment begins in the same spot and that remains true note that this does not necessarily have to be a two-dimensional time thing a linked segmented rescale works perfectly fine without any concept of two-dimensional time or complex time signatures or any of that however it is what you get when you cast a piece of audio into a two-dimensional time plot and take the shadow okay but now we've got another piece of jargon time plot what is that events and temporal things in reality happen in one dimension they happen for a length of time a one-dimensional amount of time but imagine that you could have two dimensions of time and instead of a straight line on one axis you could have a path of time that an object takes uh, that meanders through two dimensions then how are you going to perceive that well that doesn't work directly because we don't have those two dimensions of time but what you can do is you can take the shadow of segments that make up this time plot so that's what a time plot is it's really just showing you the shape of the time that a thing takes normally that's not a useful thing to have in our real life because the shape is always a straight line uh, but if the shape isn't a straight line because we have this theoretical two-dimensional time construct then a time plot is necessary to actually understand the time that the thing takes now here it's important to note that this is not the only conception of two-dimensional time that you can have. In fact, it may not even be the most logical one because it seems quite reasonable to say, well, if we have a length of time in one dimension, then we would have an area of time in two dimensions and a volume of time in three dimensions. That's a very interesting concept as well, which may be able to apply to music. I'm not sure yet, but I am exploring it and there might be a video on that at some point. But for this video, we're talking about these time plots with paths of time through two dimensions. Now, the way that Realizer makes time plots is through a random walk. So let's cover that. Basically, a random walk is achieved by defining a set of possible directions and a distance for each step, and then taking a step of that distance in a random direction over and over and over again. In two dimensions, the kind of vanilla random walk looks like this. And the technical math definition is a lot more complicated because it's a lot more general, but that's the gist and that's all we need here. That is the jargon out of the way, certainly. Let's jump into the parameters of this app. 
So there are two main modes, split by measures and not splitting by measures. If you split by measures, you give it a tempo and a meter, it figures out how many measures there are in your audio and splits it into that number of segments. Otherwise, you can just give it a certain number of segments to split it into and the segments will always be of equal length. Now those are pretty straightforward. The ones that are more interesting are probably the fall off exponent and angle range. Neither of these is particularly weird. The angle range is about each step of the random walk and what the range of possible angles is for each step. So by default, it's the full 360 degrees. So every step on the random walk is taken in a totally random direction in 2D space. But if you make that range 0 to 180, for instance, now it's only going to be half the range. And you'll find that the steps only ever go upward, actually, in this case, because 0 degrees is pointing directly rightward, and the angle range goes counterclockwise. Now, the angle range is pretty mathematically intuitive. It, it makes a lot of mathematical sense that that would be in here. But there are two parameters that I added to this program that really are not mathematically intuitive at all and are there just to make things sound better, ultimately. The first is a randomized stretch factor applied to each of the segments in the time plot. So the problem this addresses is that the output without this is always going to be a bit high biased because only ever rotating the measures and taking their shadow will always at least keep it the same speed if not make it faster so the average frequency that you get out of it is higher than you put into it. However, if you stretch some of them to be a bit longer, you will sometimes get stuff that's lower and that balances out the frequency profile of the output. This is very much in the musical spirit of the tool rather than the mathematical spirit of the tool, but that's one of the things going on. The second is the falloff exponent, and that's something you can actually control. And the falloff exponent basically came from me saying, hang on a second, zero to 180 angle range and zero to 360 angle range those sound exactly the same. There's actually no way to tell between them because all of the vertical information of the time plot gets lost when you take this shadow in order to perceive it, right? So how can we adjust that? Well, with a fall FX moment. What if we said that the farther away a segment is from the x-axis, the quieter it is? This kind of seems intuitive in some sense. It's not really very mathematically intuitive based on the two-dimensional time plot idea, but one thing it does do is it means that the vertical information of the time plot is not lost anymore. It's actually used for something. Now, by default, it's set to zero because that wasn't really the original intention of this, but setting it to one, I found, can be quite interesting. And it means that there really is a qualitative difference between zero to 360 and zero to 180 for the angle range, because with zero to 180, for the angle range, the segments will always go somewhat upward, which means the later parts in the input audio will always be quieter in the output than the earlier parts. But with a 0 to 360 range, it can meander all over the place and the end could be loud and the middle is quiet and the beginning is loud or whatever. So that's the falloff exponent. So that's all the parameters covered. I have a lot of future ideas. One of the big ones is subdivision. So what if instead of having these segments, you had a curvy line line and then maybe you could put like a constant tone into that and you would get this curvy time plot of the constant tone and that could sound quite interesting i don't know i probably will be adding that in the future but for now i just want to show you guys because i can't wait any longer so let's make some music this is kind of the third installment in what is becoming a kind of series on this channel about two-dimensional time and i have another idea which will probably turn into a video which i mentioned earlier and so this might turn into a kind of yearly thing where every year around fall time we, we talk about two-dimensional time on this channel. Um, but uh, one of the things that I want to do to make music here is to take from some of the, the last couple of videos, Unreal Time Signatures and Imaginary Time Signatures, take some of the clips from those things and use those. So for instance, one thing is that I'm going to use the 2 plus 2 I beat and make that some input to Realizer. And I also want to look at this little thing. This is not quite arranged the same way that it was in the Unreal Time Signatures video. It's all timed properly still. This was the ghost time plot. And these last two beats here kind of sound cool to me. So I think I might use that, but that probably is not going to get fed into Realizer, uh, but just used directly in whatever piece of music we're going to make, which I have no idea yet. Now this here is the test groove that I used in the little walkthrough earlier in the video. So now you get to hear it without the time plot effect applied. So 
So we're definitely going to use this one because this has just been an integral piece of music in the development of Realizer. And so uh, we're definitely going to put it into the music here. I kind of want to try some speech, like uh, just saying some stuff. So maybe I will write something out in here and then we'll put some speech in there because that, that might sound cool. Two-dimensional time is a bit odd, but it can really capture you if you let it. Dump truck, collarbone, plaque of recognition, harmonica. So this is a hip hop groove that I made a couple days ago and it just didn't really feel like it was going anywhere. So I think I might use it as fuel for Realizer and uh, yeah. Like it's nice, but I don't know what to do with it because it's not complete yet. And then there's a guitar part as well. But you know not a very good guitar part. So if you remember Tumor, which is in my opinion one of my best songs, and you remember the breakdown of Tumor, there's this sound effect in here, which is basically a bunch of egg crackling, and it was processed in a very similar way to what Realizer does. So I think what I want to do is get another long egg crackle sample and put it through Realizer and see if the result sounds very similar. Because I kind of expect that it will, but it, it might sound slightly different. So I want to do that one as well. Egg noise. So we're going to just put stuff through Realizer and then we're going we're gonna to see what, what comes to mind. I'm going to split this into a number of segments. This is an interesting shape, kind of looks like a bird. Let's see what this sounds like. That's pretty interesting, let's download that. So with this one, let's try a vanilla 360 fall off zero. I believe the speed of this beat is like 83.3. Okay, let's, let's try that. So let's try splitting it by measure. 83.3 okay interesting reminds me a bit of a dancer kind of fun just like you look at clouds like what does the cloud look like kind of fun to say like what does this time plot look like okay we're finished mm. Definitely some, some nuggets of that that I'll take. I don't think I'll take the whole thing, but let's download that. I think there are, there are more angle range experiments I wanna do, but I think I'm gonna do those with some other clips, not this two plus two IV. Okay, let's do this one, hip hop groove. I kind of wanna make the whole thing reversed. So I'm gonna go 90 to 270, and then that's gonna make everything reversed. This is so fun. Um, I'm actually using the website, as you can see. I'm not using a local hosted version or anything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'm thinking for the actual piece of music that we're going to create here that it's probably going to be something dubstepy. These are all kind of tonal clips that have been pitch shifted to arbitrary amounts. They're not within 12 tet or anything like that. So, yeah, I think it'll probably be more of a dubstepy, like. Lots of samples happening with a drum beat to lock us in. Let's try it with a full range though on this as well. And let's try it with a fall of exponent of one. That very last bit of it sounds like a video game sound effect. Yeah, that's cool. I'll download that. Ah, yes, eggshell crackling. So this one, we are probably going to do a certain number of segments because there's no tempo. We're going to do a big number of segments. Uh, fun fact, the number of segments has almost nothing to do with the processing time. The processing time is all about how long the file is that you upload and specifically how long it is, not the file size, but how long it is. So like you could do a thousand segments and that wouldn't take much longer than doing 10 segments. Just uh, FYI. Ah, that's very interesting. Okay, that does not really sound like what I made originally, what I made, you know, following the Wangling tutorial. It sounds similar in some ways, obviously, but it does sound different in a lot of ways as well. Oh yeah, that is sick. I like that a lot. Okay, I know a lot of people probably don't like that, but I love it. I'm gonna try something new with test groove. So I'm gonna do angle range zero to 360, that's fine. And I'm gonna do 
1,000 segments. The main thing that'll take longer uh, is just generating the plot image. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that looks like some sort of mythical monster, some deity. I'm scared of this. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, though, how it it's kind of symmetrical. That doesn't often happen with random walks, but I suppose law of large numbers. So, okay, let's see what this sounds like. So it's very short. Of course, Test Groove itself is a pretty short clip. It's only like a few seconds long, but... Yeah, okay, let's, let's download that. Now, here's, here's another thing you can do with this. You can limit the angle range to be only one angle. The uh, kind of randomized scale factor will still apply, but for instance, Test Groove is 92 beats per minute. So if we say 92, we can make the angle zero to zero. So what it's gonna do is, it's just gonna be horizontal lines, but every two beats, the speed will change which is interesting. So so this is what the graph looks like, <laughs> like kind of polar opposite to the last one. Uh, but this is what this sounds like once it finishes processing. You get to kind of preview it and try to guess, like what is this gonna sound like by uh, looking at the plot, which is really fun. Okay, and here's here's something to check out. Um, what if we do 90 and 90, right? So this should make them all like straight up, right? Now this is what it looks like. It doesn't look like it's pointing straight up, but pay attention to that scale. The width of this graph is 0 0.005 and the height is nearly 14. So this is actually <laughs> enormously skinny and it's stretched out by like a factor of 10,000 or something like that. So let's listen to this. Um, Okay, that's it. Uh, that, that's all we got there. And that's because, again, this is incredibly skinny. The width of this is actually only 0 0.005. So that's a little hi-hat, maybe. Let's move on to the next sample, uh, which is words. This is, this is me actually just speaking. Let's try a good old 15 segments. That seems like a pretty reasonable number to get some good results. Oh, yeah. I'm liking the look of this. There's a bit <laughs> yes, I like this. Another one. You're Jump truck. A bit of raw <laughs> harmonica. <laughs> oh, oh no, this is beautiful. You're Jump truck. A bit of raw <laughs> harmonica. You think it's done? You think you hear two-dimensional time? You think it's done? And then it's uh, and then it's like harmonica. You're Jump truck. A bit of raw <laughs> harmonica. Beautiful. Okay, so I think we have some material definitely to work with now. Let's make a track. Okay, this is a beat. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a Mario level up sound. Right there. Okay, this is sounding sick. This is gonna have reverb, like big reverb, you know, like ooh. Harmonica. <laughs> okay, what we should do is we should record some harmonica for this, of course. So this is probably what I'll do. You're Jump track. A bit of raw harmonica. Is a bit All right, so I think we have a basic beat laid down now. This is a bit okay, uh, so I'm going to flesh this out and uh, see where it goes. What if you enjoyed this content or you enjoyed Realizer? Well then, it might be a good idea to support me on Patreon and join my Discord server. Joining the Discord is completely free, so you should definitely do that. But supporting me on Patreon is the best way to support this channel and the continued development of Realizer and any other apps that I make uh, on the Chamberlain Music website. So, uh, with that, if you make anything with Realizer, send it my way through the Discord. I'd love to hear it. And I wish you happy musicking. I hope that you're staying safe and healthy. Thanks for watching. Yeah.
Harmonica. Dump truck. Harmonica.